All right, we're coming up with, uh, in, in September, we've got to come up with a new budget. Yes. Um, how do you, you talked about reaching across the aisle. Is there something you can do right now to reach across the aisle to help uh, move the, uh, the economy forward, move the country forward? Well, the only thing I can say about a budget, let's don't shut down the government. We're spending at 2008 levels when it comes to discretionary spending. We've cut the military to the bone. What we should be focusing on is dealing with the unfunded liability of Medicare and Social Security. The discretionary budget is at historic lows when you compare to other Congresses. We've got to find a plan to get Medicare and Social Security in a better spot, something like symptom bowls. We need to not shut down the government. We tried that before. And that means that if we're not going to shut down the government, then let's sit down together and work this out. But we also have to understand that we cannot continue this debt spending, this deficit spending, which has created the largest debt in history. So it's going to be tough. Will we sit down? Uh, I'm not sure. But I know this, that my voters, as well as the people here in New Hampshire, want us to get something done. And that is what has given rise to the support that people are getting who has never been in public office, to be honest with you. So, uh, you know, you're, you're here stumping for Senator Graham. Mm -hmm. How would he be different as president in a budget showdown like this? Uh, one thing that Senator Graham has proven over the years is he'll sit down with people. He'll be a tough negotiator. I've been in the room when he's negotiated. He knows how to negotiate, and he has the re utmost respect of the other side. They'll sit down with him because they know that his word is good. Uh, one last question. And, um, uh, so one last question. Uh, Putin is moving troops into Syria, right. uh, you know, he's reinforcing his bases. Um, how does that change the calculus? Uh, in a horrible fashion for us. Assad is the magnet to radical Sunni extremists. Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, ISIL have one goal, not only establish a caliphate, but to purge the world of Shias. He's an Alawite. He's destroyed his country. He's killed 230,000 of his own people. There is no way Syrians will accept him as their leader. They want two things, to destroy ISIL and replace Assad. By Russia reinforcing Assad, you make this war endless. You continue the slaughter, and it becomes a uh, launching pad for an attack on our country. So reinforcing Assad hurts American national security, it damns Syria to unending war, and what Putin is doing is a slap in the face to Obama and Gary. Five Chinese ships showed off the coast of Alaska when Barack Obama was there, first time in history. Uh, Vladimir Putin is sticking his thumb in our eye by moving these forces into Syria. We have no credibility. This is a result of failed policies. It will complicate it. Thousands more will die because of the failure of Barack Obama to lead. Can I just say one thing? The worst is yet to come in Syria, with Syria. John and I predicted three years ago, if you don't help the Free Syrian Army when you can, you'll regret it. His entire national security uh, apparatus advised the president establish a no-fly zone, like Sarah McCain suggested, help the Free Syrian Army while they were intact. That window is closed. There's nobody left in Syria really to work with. We trained 50 or 54 people with $50 million. Now we're in a horribly bad spot. Assad being in Syria means the war never ends. The Arabs are not going to accept him because he's a puppet of Iran. The people are not going to accept him because he slaughtered their family. At the end of the day, Assad must go and ISIL must be destroyed, and I intend to do both. And if you don't do both, we're going to get attacked here at home. Thank you. Thank you.